Hey guys, I'm Robert. I used to have ADHD. I don't have ADHD anymore. And I'm making this video to tell you guys about this really cool treatment called neurofeedback that really changed my life and I just want to tell you my story. ADHD is the brain having a physical disability to choose what it pays attention to. If you're in a classroom, you know, classrooms are noisy. There are kids on one side having a discussion, uh, the air conditioner is whirring, um, and when the teacher's talking, you can't choose to pay attention to that teacher over the conversation that's happening on the far right of the room, over the noise of the air conditioner, over the noise of the kid next to you tapping his feet. You don't get to choose whatever is the loudest is what you pay attention to. You kind of hear everything at the same time. I spent the first 17 years of my life getting about 10% of the things people were saying to me and filling in the other 90%. And the problem with that primarily, other than the fact that you're missing information, is it makes it really hard to relate to people because you can't hear what they're saying to you. And that leads to social anxiety because no one will really ever respond positively to you when they feel like you're not listening to them. ADHD stems from having about 60% of the dopamine of a normal person. And dopamine is your brain's chemical reward system. And your brain wants to have enough dopamine all the time. So when someone with ADHD uh, tries to do something boring, their brain simply doesn't have enough reward for them to keep doing it. And so parents of people with ADHD will often point out that their kid can game for six hours at a time and can't do six minutes of math homework. And that's because that kid is searching for something that'll release that the gap in dopamine between an ADHD brain and a normal brain and gaming releases that extra dopamine and math doesn't so kids with ADHD can really only do the things they love for that reason. ADHD makes something that's so simple as making a bed feel emotionally overwhelming because ADHD makes it impossible to connect problems to their solutions with steps in your head. So making a bed, pretty simple process, you know, um, take off the top sheets, take off the pillows, put on the sheet, put on a blanket, put the pillows back on, you're done. But that's four or five steps and in it, when you have ADHD, it's impossible to do that in your head. So you look at a bed and you think, oh my God, how, how do I put that together? And it feels like the task will never end, and so you just don't do it. Because ADHD makes it to where you can't really think things through, the only way you have to think about things is what feels good probably is good. You can't think about the consequences, you go with your feelings. So when I had ADHD and someone came up to me and uh, said, hey, it's a Wednesday night, why don't we go get drunk? I'd say yes, because I wasn't thinking, hey, tomorrow's Thursday, I have a test, I probably won't want to be hung over for it. I was just thinking, hey, getting drunk feels good, let's do that. I was diagnosed with ADHD by, <laughs> basically by going into a doctor and telling him that I had ADHD. Uh, he, he just kind of believed me. There was no real diagnostic test or anything. But basically, I went into a doctor, told him I had ADHD. First thing he did was hand me a prescription for Vyvanse, which if you don't know what Vyvanse is, it's a very powerful amphetamine. It's uh, basically a little bit milder form of meth. Vyvanse, for lack of better terminology, stole my soul, uh, temporarily at least, while I was on it. It made me feel extremely wooden, dead, and boring, and so I started doing a lot of other drugs, drinking, in order to level it out. So in a very real way, Vyvanse was my gateway drug. Vyvanse also skyrocketed my social anxiety and made me not feel like myself. And I guess I started thinking, why does my doctor really know what's best for me? He's not in my own head, I am. So I started playing around with a lot of other drugs to try and figure out 
what molecules would make me feel best. You know, I'd been prescribed Vyvanse by a man in a white lab coat. I'd already been told that I was better off on drugs than off of drugs. I figured I'll figure out what drugs are best for me. Uh, to give you an idea of how bad it got, how bad it can get, for a while, I was uh, taking Valium and smoking weed and going to school, and that's kind of how I went through life. There's really a solid three-month spot in my memory that's uh, mostly blank just from drug use. I used to procrastinate a lot. I'd always put work off to the very last minute, and I was told I was really lazy for this all the time. But it wasn't out of laziness, or at least it wasn't out of laziness intentionally. I, my personal theory is that I would procrastinate because when I procrastinated, I was put in a position where I was afraid I was going to fail if I didn't do the work immediately. And it released a lot of adrenaline out of fear in my brain, and that adrenaline kind of acted as an ADHD medication. So I know um, people with ADHD, they procrastinate a lot, and I just wanted to say it's not a character defect. It's the brain looking to uh, manage its own ADHD in the best way possible. I used to have to lie a lot just to get through my day, just to keep people off my back, because I had always forgotten to do something. And the lies were never malicious, and uh, they were never too far off from what I intended to be the truth. For example, if I'd forgotten to do an English essay, my English teacher would ask me, Robert, do you have your essay with you today? And I'd say, no, no, I'm sorry, I did it, I forgot it, uh, I left it at home on my desk, I'll bring it in tomorrow. And the thought in my mind was, I'm going to go home and immediately do that, and then I'd walk out the door and see something shiny and completely forget about it. So I'd end up lying all the time just to keep people off my back because I couldn't really get through my day another way. So for a long time, I was really sure that I wasn't going to be able to go a day in my life without being high from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep. And so when my mom said, uh, we should take you for neurofeedback, I thought, I mean, I guess this couldn't hurt, but I really didn't think it would do all that much. But now I'm happy in my own head and it really changed my life. The biggest change I've seen since I started doing neurofeedback regarding ADHD is now when I talk to someone, I hear everything they say to me. Uh, when someone is talking to me, I don't know, if you don't have ADHD, it's, that doesn't seem remarkable at all, but to those of you with ADHD, it, it, it was just really, it's really an amazing feeling to have someone talk to you and hear every word that they're saying and be able to engage in a conversation with them. Because I can hear what people are saying to me now, I've started getting positive feedback in conversations. And because I started getting positive feedback, my social anxiety has gone away and I'm much more comfortable just being who I am. Neurofeedback is like a cheat code to life because it makes me so able to handle the adverse events that happen on a daily basis. When things happen that used to make me upset and used to make me freak out, I stay calm through them and I'm able to handle them.